Imagine boarding a train in London and stepping off in New York only a few hours later. No airport, no long flight across the Atlantic, just a tunnel beneath the ocean carrying passengers and cargo between Europe and North America. On the map, the Atlantic Ocean is vast but finite, and if we can tunnel under the English Channel, why not under the Atlantic? For more than a century, engineers and dreamers have proposed it, yet no such tunnel exists. Why has humanity never built a tunnel between Britain and America? is the mystery we'll solve today. The Atlantic Ocean separates Europe and North America by roughly 5,500 kilometers at its most narrow points between the United Kingdom and the northeastern United States and Canada. A tunnel under the ocean would connect the two most advanced economic regions on Earth. The benefits would be extraordinary. Cargo ships crossing the Atlantic today take 7 to 10 days. A high-speed train in a tunnel could make that trip in less than 24 hours. Passenger flights more than seven hours, but a tunnel could theoretically compete with or even beat that time if futuristic technology such as evacuated tube trains were used. Trade, travel, and communication between continents would transform. Ports would decline in importance. Supply chains would accelerate. Even energy infrastructure could be shared. A transatlantic tunnel would carry power cables, fiber optic lines, and pipelines, and symbolically, it would unite the old world and the new in one single single stroke of engineering. However, the tunnel has never left the drawing board. To understand why, we have to look at the staggering obstacles between dream and reality. The first barrier becomes geography. The English Channel, where the Channel Tunnel was built, is only 34 kilometers wide at its most narrow and 75 meters deep. The Atlantic Ocean is 5,500 kilometers wide between Britain and America, and its average depth is over 3,600 meters, the deepest point along a potential route in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge plunges more than 4,000 meters, and no tunnel in history has been built at anything close to that depth or length. The longest tunnel today is in Switzerland and runs 57 kilometers under the mountains. The Channel Tunnel is 50 kilometers under shallow sea, and a transatlantic tunnel would need to be 100 times longer and more than 50 times deeper. Current tunneling technology simply cannot excavate at such a pressure. At 4,000 meters underwater, the pressure reaches about 400 atmospheres, over 5,800 pounds per square inch. Any failure in that structure would result in instant catastrophic collapse. To withstand it, the tunnel walls would have to be unimaginably thick, made of materials far stronger than those used today. The cost of producing and installing such a structure along thousands of kilometers would be astronomical. Even maintaining them would be nearly impossible. Ventilation becomes an issue. In the channel tunnel, air is circulated with massive fans and safety exits are placed along the route. But in a 5,000 kilometer long tunnel, providing air, power, and emergency access would be a project larger than anything humanity has ever attempted. How would such a tunnel even be built? Traditional tunnel boring machines are designed for projects up to tens of kilometers, but not thousands. They require frequent maintenance and replacement of cutting heads. And building under the Atlantic would mean constructing and servicing TBMs very far from land under immense pressure for decades. Alternative concepts include laying prefabricated tunnel sections on the ocean floor, covering them with protective layers, a method used for short undersea tunnels like parts of Denmark's Great Belt Fixed Link. But scaling it up to thousands of kilometers at depths of four kilometers has never been done and likely will never be done with today's equipment. The Atlantic Ocean is not geologically stable. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a divergent tectonic boundary where the Eurasian and North American plates pull apart from the African and South American plates. Earthquakes and volcanic activity are common amongst this ridge. A tunnel laid across it would face constant seismic stress. Even minor movements could crack or misalign structures, leading to catastrophic flooding. And unlike land tunnels, where reinforcements and repairs are possible, an under-ocean tunnel thousands of kilometers long would be almost impossible to fix once compromised. In any tunnel, safety regulations require evacuation routes. In the Channel Tunnel, a service tunnel runs parallel for emergencies, with cross passages every 375 meters. In Switzerland's Gothard Base Tunnel, exits connect to vertical shafts and parallel tunnels. For a transatlantic tunnel, building service tunnels would double or triple the cost. And even then, emergency exits would be useless in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. In case of fire, structural damage, or mechanical failure, rescuing passengers would be nearly 
impossible. The Channel Tunnel costs more than $9 billion in 1994, equivalent to over $20 billion today for just 50 kilometers. The Gothard Tunnel cost $12 billion for 57 kilometers, and a transatlantic tunnel scaled up would likely cost tens of trillions of dollars. Studies from engineers who have speculated on such a project suggest costs between $10 trillion and $20 trillion at minimum. This exceeds the GDP of most countries on Earth, and financing such a project would require international cooperation on a level never before seen. Investors have no incentives because air and sea transport already provide cheap alternatives. Even if a tunnel existed, would it be faster than a plane? Conventional trains take around 300 kilometers per hour. At that speed, a 5,500 kilometer trip would take 18 hours, much slower than a flight. To compete, engineers propose vacuum or magnetic levitation trains reaching 5,000 kilometers per hour. At those speeds, London to New York would take just over an hour, but such technology remains theoretical. Evacuated tube transport requires perfect vacuum seals and straight tracks, and the slightest structural defect would cause disaster. No such system exists today, even on land. Expecting it to operate under the Atlantic Ocean is decades, if not centuries, away. Powering trains through a 5,500-kilometer tunnel would consume enormous amounts of energy. High-speed trains need electricity, not only for propulsion, but also for lighting, ventilation, and safety systems. Supplying that power across an ocean would require massive undersea cables. Maintenance of such a system would be an additional challenge, vulnerable to faults that could halt entire journeys. The tunnel would cross international waters, requiring agreements between multiple countries. But who would own it? Who would regulate it? And how would security be managed? The Channel Tunnel required cooperation between only two nations, Britain and France, and even that was politically sensitive. A transatlantic tunnel would involve the European Union, the United States, Canada, NATO, and possibly even the United Nations. The complexity of governance alone could stall the project indefinitely. Environmental groups raise concerns about massive projects under the ocean. Construction would disturb marine ecosystems, noise would affect whales and dolphins, and risks of leaking and collapse could devastate the Atlantic environment. On land, building terminal facilities capable of handling millions of passengers and cargo requires enormous coastal development in both Britain and America. Carbon emissions from construction alone would be vast, offsetting environmental benefits of shifting transport from planes to trains. The idea of a transatlantic tunnel is nothing new. In 1895, a French engineer proposed a submarine tunnel using submerged tubes. In 1913, an American engineer suggested a similar idea. In the 20th century, visionary projects appeared in popular science magazines, and in 1960, one civil engineer proposed a tunnel using capsules propelled through vacuum tubes. In the 1990s, German and American engineers speculated about superconducting maglev trains in evacuated tunnels, calling it the transatlantic maglev. None of these proposals advanced beyond theory. The scale of engineering, the cost, and the risk were all just too high. The Channel Tunnel is often called the Chunnel, and cited as proof that a transatlantic tunnel can exist. But the comparison highlights the impossibility. The Channel Tunnel is 50 kilometers long, shallow, and passes through stable chalk. It took 13,000 workers, 11 machines, and six years to complete. Scaling up to 5,500 kilometers under such deep and unstable ocean floor is not only 100 times harder, it's a different category of problem altogether. Instead of a tunnel, the world relies on faster planes and efficient shipping. Container ships today are larger and cheaper per ton than ever before, and passenger jets like the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 are fuel efficient and reliable. Supersonic jets like the Concorde once made that trip in under four hours, and now new supersonic projects may revive the possibility. These technologies make the tunnel unnecessary. Why spend trillions and decades building infrastructure when planes already achieve that goal at a lower cost? Still, dreamers continue to imagine. Some propose floating tunnels suspended by cables beneath the ocean's surface, avoiding deep seabed construction, while others envision maglev trains in vacuum-sealed tubes laid on the seabed. In theory, these could work, when in practice, no prototype longer than a few kilometers exists. A leap from short experiment to 5,500 kilometer structure is almost unimaginable. So then why is
is there no tunnel between Britain and America? Because the Atlantic Ocean presents barriers well beyond anything that humanity has ever conquered. Its depth and width are unprecedented. The pressures at the seabed are crushing. Construction would cost trillions and maintenance would be impossible. Safety, evacuation, and rescue are unsolvable. And even if built, planes already offer faster, cheaper, and safer travel. The dream of a transatlantic tunnel remains a symbol of human imagination, an idea that appears in science fiction, engineering journals, and futuristic magazines. For now, and likely for centuries to come, the Atlantic will be crossed by ships and planes, but not trains beneath the ocean. The world is full of mysteries, and we're here to crack them. Thanks for watching World Crack. As always, be sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it with a friend. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.